Hello everyone. Welcome back to the special census series. In the previous topic, we saw about the various layers of the retina. And out of the various layers of the retina, there is one important layer that is the photoreceptor layer. And we saw that the photoreceptor layer consists of two important photoreceptors that is the rods and cones. In this session, what we are going to discuss is, in this session, we are going to discuss how the photochemistry of vision is going to happen. How the biochemical changes are going to be happening in the photoreceptors, which in turn is going to bring about the visual impulses. So let's get into the topic. So we are discussing the special senses vision under which the retina and photochemistry. Today we will be discussing about the photochemistry of the vision. So coming to the photoreceptors, we know that there are primarily two important types of photoreceptors. One is the rod because of their rod shape in their nature. Another one is the cones because of their conical shape in their nature. And as you can see from the figure, that is it has two important segments. One is the outer segment, another one is the inner segment. And finally, it gives impulses to the bipolar cells via the synaptic terminal. In the inner segment, we have two important things. One is the mitochondria for the production of energy and the nucleus. Whereas in the outer segment side, the plasma membrane, so it is basically a cell, but here the plasma membrane of the cell is modified, is modified into this rod and cone type of structure. And this plasma membrane is the one which is a storehouse. It is the one which is storing the entire photopigment of the rods and cones. And we know that the rods are important for the night vision or the vision which is uh, not perceiving the color. So this type of vision is called as scotopic vision. So this is called as a night vision. It is called scotopic vision. So rods, they are going to detect the gray shades of the things. They are not going to perceive the colors. Colors perception is done with the help of cones. And that is why cone is called as the photopic vision. Photopic vision. The photopic vision is responsible with the help of cones. This theory is called as duplicity theory. So what is duplicity theory? Each works maximally under different conditions of illumination. Low illumination, the cones, the rods are going to work higher and whether in a bright illumination and for color vision, the cones are going to work better. So these are the photoreceptors that is important. And these are the primarily two photoreceptors, but recently they have identified one more group of photoreceptors, which is called as intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. So what is this IPRGC? It is nothing but intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. So it is a type of ganglion cell. And this is nowadays called as the third type of photoreceptor. So let's see a few points about it. These are latest uh, inventions. So first thing is they are not going to detect the color or the other features. They are going to detect the illumination of the environment, illumination of the environment. So it is going to tell whether the environment is having a bright daylight or it is a night. So this illumination of the environment will be sensed by this photo intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. And they are going to tell the brain that whether this person is living in a daytime condition or in the nighttime condition. So it is not going to sense the images. It is going to sense the illumination. What is the help of it? And all of us know that the vision is very, very important for the circadian rhythm. That is the 24 day cycle, 24 hour day cycle of the person. So it is going to control the circadian rhythm. In our CNS lectures, we saw that the circadian rhythm, the retina is giving impulses to the hypothalamus and telling the brain that whether it is a day or a night. And it is done with the help of these kinds of special type of ganglion cells or the third type of photoreceptors. So this is one additional fact we have to remember. Now coming back to our uh, photosensitive cycle. This cycle is called as retinal visual cycle. So we are going to primarily study for the rods and for the cones more or less everything is similar. So let's try to study the retinal visual cycle. This is very very important for the exam point of view. So first thing is as I told you the photoreceptor the plasma membrane has the photopigments. So ultimately this photopigment has to be activated 
and then only it can be perceived as an image by the brain. So first thing is the rhodopsin is the primary pigment which is going to get activated and as you can see here in the first step the light energy is required. There is requirement of light energy which is going to activate this rhodopsin. When light energy is activated then the rest of the process is not light dependent. They can happen without the use of light energy. So it is going to convert it into batho lumi meta. Remember it like batho lumi meta. Batho rhodopsin, lumi rhodopsin and meta rhodopsin. And meta rhodopsin will get converted into a more active form that is a meta rhodopsin 2. So from meta rhodopsin 1 it is going to get converted to meta rhodopsin 2. This meta rhodopsin 2 is the most important element. This is the one which is also called as activated rhodopsins and it is going to excite and cause the electrical changes in the rods. So this is very very important. This meta rhodopsin can finally dissociate into two substances that is the scotopsin and altransretinal AL with an AL. This altransretinal is constantly in exchange with the Altrans retinol. So this retinol component is going to supply this Altrans retinol as and when it is required. Suppose a person is having some kind of deficiency of vitamin A. What is going to happen? This Altrans retinol is not going to get formed. That is why they are having a night blindness. So this vitamin A deficiency can lead on to a light blindness. And we know that this vitamin A is present in the photopigment layer. That is why the photoreceptor layer and the photopigment epithelium layer are very close to each other because this pigment epithelium layer is basically giving the supply of this uh, altrans retinol to the photoreceptor layer. And with the help of an isomerase enzyme, it can get converted into Levensis retinol. And again, this cotopsin and Levensis retinol can reform the rhodopsin for the next cycle to begin. So this process is constantly happening. And the division of the meta rhodopsin into the retinal and the opsin, that is the scotopsin, is this process is called as a special name with called as bleaching. So this process is called as bleaching. So when this is going to happen, so whenever there is a present of light energy, this meta rhodopsin 2 is going to get activated. So this is the one point we have to remember. Now let's go into the further molecular mechanism, that is how the rod is getting excited. So we will be studying them under two things. One is what happens in the dark environment and what happens in the light environment. So let's try to understand what happens in the dark first. So in the dark, it is going to produce some currents called as the dark current. As you can see here, in the dark, the potash sodium is coming out of it. And again, it is going to the level of the outer segment and reaching the rhodopsin layer. So when this sodium is constantly present, what is going to happen? It is going to produce a current called as dark current. This dark current, it is very important to listen here because now the positive ions are entering and it is producing a dark current. And because of this dark current, what is going to happen? The neurotransmitter glutamate is going to be released. So whenever there is a glutamate release, all of us think that it will cause an action potential in the next neurons. But here, this is one differentiating features from all other area and the excitation of the rod. Here, the bipolar cells will not get activated whenever there is a release of glutamate. Whenever they sense the decrease in glutamate level, then only they can get activated. This is very, very important point. So what happens in the light environment? In the light environment, this sodium channel entry is going to be blocked. That is no entry of sodium ions is happening in at the level of the plasma membrane of the rods and cones. So what is going to happen? The ultimate neurotransmitter release, that is the ultimate neurotransmitter release is going to come down. So ultimately the release of glutamate is going to come down. What is going to happen is this will cause a type of hyperpolarization. This hyperpolarization is going to activate the bipolar cells. It is very very important. Here the hyperpolarization is activating the bipolar cells which then will be forward way carried forward to the brain and the sense of light or sense of the images will be perceived. So this is ultimately different from many other areas in the body wherein 
the depolarization will cause an activation here the hyperpolarization is causing an activation now we will go into the further in depth mechanism or molecular mechanism of the photo transduction before that we know two things when sodium is entering it is going to cause the neurotransmitter release and there is no not going to be the transmission which is happening in the dark this is also called as dark current when sodium is not entering then light is going to get activated so let's understand the dark thing first the light situation is just the reverse of the dark so first is the rhodopsin in the dark is not activated the transducin the next component it is also not activated because rhodopsin has to activate it then the third component the phosphodiesterase it is also not activated here we can see that the transducin has an alpha and beta gamma subunit they have to be activated first and if since phosphodiesterase is not activated what is going to happen is there is a constant conversion of gtp to cyclic gmp and this sodium channel is a cyclic gmp gated sodium channel now what is happening the cyclic gmp is available because of its availability it will go and open the gate of sodium and the sodium is going to enter as well as some amount of calcium is going to enter so the dark current is going to flow the glutamate is going to be released so the bipolar cells are not activated here so that is what we have written here phosphodiesterase molecule is also in an inactive stage now let's see what happens in a light form or an activated stage when light hits the rhodopsin as you can see here the rhodopsin will activate the next molecule that is a transducin now this transducin promotes the exchange of gdp for gtp so it is going to form t alpha gtp this is an active component and there is going to be a t beta gamma subunit but this t alpha gtp will cause the activation of pde what is this pde is phosphodiesterase and phosphodiesterase is one component which will convert the cyclic gmp to an inactive form that is 5 dash cyclic gmp so it is basically inactivating it is inactivating this cyclic gmp now if cyclic gmp is not available the gate will naturally be closed and the sodium entry will be naturally prevented so this is the step wherein the phosphodiesterase is converting the activated form of cyclic gmp to an inactive form and uh, here you can see that phosphodiesterase we have already seen it in some places it is the phosphodiesterase inhibitors are given for the patients with erectile dysfunction so if you give such a substance what is the disadvantage of it the disadvantage of that is now phosphodiesterase is essential for a vision now because of this getting inhibited what is going to happen this person who is taking an erectile dysfunction drug will have temporary loss of vision this is a side effect of the drug which could happen in some amount of people it is not going to happen in everybody but in some persons this side effect of a temporary loss of vision can happen because of this mechanism now the sodium channel is going to get closed which is ultimately going to reduce the glutamate and cause an hyperpolarization and activation of the entire bipolar cells and further it is going to be traveling to the brain now this excitation cascade in a light is very very beautiful if you are in a dark room still if i throw a little bit of light then also you will be able to perceive it even a small amount of light the eye is able to perceive so how does it happen because the one photon has an ability to activate one meta rhodopsin we might think one to one but this can in turn activate 700 transducin molecule and this will activate a tremendous amount of phosphodiesterase which increases the cyclic gmp conversion to an inactive form to 100 folds so as you can see here it will close around 3 to 230 cyclic gmp gated sodium channels so that many sodium channels are going to get closed and that is the power of one single photon that is why even a single photon can get activated and it can cause a visual impulses now this cannot go on for a very long time if a new impulse is not coming we will not be able to see anything this will happen when continuously some impulses are coming so how does this cascade has to stop for example if new light is not coming how the cascade will stop this cascade whatever we have seen previously all of them are going to go back to their original state or an inactivated state so the first thing is there is a protein called rhodopsin kinase 
which will phosphorylate the metarhodopsin 2. We saw that metarhodopsin is the first step which is going to get it activated. Now this metarhodopsin can be sensed by a protein called as arrestin. So as the name indicates arrestin. So what it is going to do? It is going to just arrest the activation of transducin. So the metarhodopsin will be arrested and it cannot activate the transducin. Now we, if we have an already activated transducin, what is going to happen? That will also have an intrinsic GTPase activity which will lead on to convert the GTP back to GDP forms. So again it is going to back to its original state. And even the phosphodiesterase will be released from the T-alpha GDP. The T-alpha GDP is the one which is going to bind and activate the phosphodiesterase which is going not going to happen in this case. And finally the cyclic GMP is going to be formed again and it is going to open the sodium channel and it is going to cause the dark current. Again if light is coming, so what will happen? Again the cycle is going to go through it. So that is how the person needs a continuous stimulus of light to perceive the surrounding environment. I hope it's clear. Thank you for watching the video. Further details of how the impulses are transmitted to the brain and the other pathways of the optic pathway we are going to study in the coming videos. Stay tuned for more videos. Subscribe to the channel and uh, drop your doubts in the comment section. I'll be very happy to go through and help you. Thank you so much. Thank you.